This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Paul here today with another one for you. We're going to talk about why it takes more than gear to get huge. You have to fucking suffer. Suffering is the key to getting huge, not gear. Before we get into it, please take the time to subscribe to my channel. It's the best way you can show your appreciation for all this awesome content I am putting out for free. Uh, if you have questions, comments, you want to tell me how wrong I am, you can do so in the comment section below. I will do my best to respond to each and every one of you. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me about coaching or a 30-minute consultation call, you can do so by reaching out to me. My contact information is in the video description. I am at Paul K. Barnett on Instagram. If you want to shoot me a message, if you want to send me an email, I am at BigP3RD at gmail.com on Google Mail. Um, and if you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button. All right. So it takes more than gear to get huge. People do not want to hear this one. They don't want to hear this one. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to guys that come to me and... They, they want, they think the answer to getting big is, is just taking more and more and more and more gear. And I won't deny it. More gear works to a certain degree, but it won't work if you aren't doing, uh, the things that are necessary to get big. It only helps. Um, it only helps facilitate it. You have to put in the work. It doesn't do the work for you. So I kind of came up with my list of, of the things that you have to do you have to be willing to do and do consistently if you really want to be huge, if you really want to be an IFBB pro, if that is your goal. If not, that's fine too. You can just be a gym bro, look a little better than the average person. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but um, don't think the thing that's separating you from a, a pro card is uh, a little more trend because I promise you it's not. Um, so... The things that I on my list that I have that about getting big, eating when you don't want to eat. Uh, there is a guy at my gym who is on the cusp of getting his pro card, and um, um, I don't want to name him, but uh, I admire him in his work ethic. The, this this kid is a fucking hard worker. Uh, he will have his pro card if not this year soon. Um, you know, dude's five, nine is rolling around about 300 pounds at probably 10% body fat. Um, and every time I see him, he works at the gym that I go to. Every time I see him, you know what he's doing? He's eating fucking chicken and rice every goddamn time I see him. I'm like, dude, is there a time you're not eating? And he looks miserable when he eats too. He looks like he's suffering when he eats. You have to suffer if you want to get big. I get guys all the time. I'll put diets together. And they'll be like, "Oh my God, this is so much food!" I, I like, coach. I, do, I I can't. I can't eat six meals. I can only do five. And I'm like, "Well, then you must not want it that bad because that's what it takes." Um, so you have to eat when you don't want to eat. Weighing and measuring your food. This is another thing. If you aren't weighing and measuring your food, you aren't serious about bodybuilding. You just aren't. There's no way you can make adjustments, at least intelligent adjustments necessary to achieve the results you want to achieve if you aren't measuring and weighing your food. You have to have accurate data if you want to make adjustments. And accurate data requires accurate monitoring, and that is weighing and measuring food in this situation. Meal prep. So many people want to skimp on the meal prep. If you got the money to burn, hire a fucking meal prep service. I know one thing. I'm not spending $2,000 a month on a meal prep service. Fuck that shit. I'm not that lazy. I can't cook my own chicken. Um, uh, but uh, so many people I'll see that just use protein powder. And this is another reason why I hate fucking protein powder. It's not so much that protein powder is so bad. It's just lazy. It's a cop out. People don't want to cook and eat real food. I don't feel like I don't feel like making that chicken or that beef or whatever. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eat a drink a protein shake instead. You're being lazy, and I, I promise you, the people that eat the real food and are eating chicken and rice and meat and rice six times a day are the ones that get the best results, not the dudes that are 
you know, drinking goddamn protein shakes all day long. And I know everybody tells me Hunter Labrada, Hunter Labrada, Hunter Labrada. I'm pretty sure that dude could mow lawns and get big. He's got crazy genetics. You are not Hunter Labrada. You cannot drink four protein shakes a day and look like Hunter Labrada. There's one dude in the world that looks like that drinking four protein shakes a day, and that's Hunter Labrada. Um... Uh, th- this goes along with your your weighing and measuring food, but actually tracking your macros every day. A- actually having, a, you know, you can weigh and measure it, but if you're not logging it in somewhere, it's pointless. Um, you know, you have to log your meals. You have to log your meals. Um, getting adequate rest and recovery. This is another one that, that that's that's drives me nuts um i'll see young guys that just go out and get ripped on the weekends and they you know they end up not eating um they go out you know they're chasing women they're going to the club whatever drinking beer and then and then they fucked up everything they, positive they did monday through friday because of 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 saturday night um you can't be doing that shit if you want to be elite you just can't you got to skip Skip the going out and partying with your friends and stay at home. Or if you go out, don't drink. Don't drink. Get home at a decent time. Get to sleep at a decent time. You have to get your sleep in. You have to take your rest and recovery seriously or you're not going to grow. Your body does not want to be 300 pounds. You have to force it to be 300 pounds. You have to set up the perfect environment for it to be 300 pounds. Um, it, 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 it just, you know, it doesn't want to be 300 pounds of muscle. It just doesn't. And it won't do it in, unless the perfect conditions exist. And I promise you being out on the dance floor at 2 AM with, with a, with a beer in your hand is not the way, to, not the way to achieve perfect conditions. Um, another one that drives me nuts is I'll talk to people about their workouts. I'm like, how are your workouts going? Oh, they're great. I'm like, how, you know, you know, define great. What, what progress have you made? What, what are your lips looking like? Um, how much volume are you doing? Uh, how many reps are you doing? What, 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 you know, where are your weights at now compared to what they were four months ago? And, and you get blank stares because nobody writes down their goddamn workouts anymore. It, it blows my mind. I have tracked every workout I've ever done in my goddamn life. Um, um, once again, I, I go back to this data is important. Data matters. When you start tracking things, you make improvements. You can't make adjustments if you don't have data. You have to have data if you want to improve. So the best people, the best performers in the gym are the ones that are writing down the workouts. You look at it. I guarantee you, you go in, um, you see the people that are the best performers in the gym, whether they're power lifters or bodybuilders, they're the ones writing down their workouts. Guarantee it. They look at the last workout. They try to beat it the next time out. They try to do a little bit better and progress each time. Um, that's how they get better, to progressively push and, and, to, and to improve. Um, your, your body won't adapt unless you force it out of its comfort zone and provide a stimulus that's novel, a stimulus that it's never experienced before. And then your body will adapt to that stimulus and grow. If you're not providing novel stimulus, there's no reason for it to grow. It will remain exactly the same. So, hence, why you have to suffer, push to new extremes that you've never been at before, whether that's volume, whether that's reps, whether that's load, um, uh, tension, you know, whatever. Uh, you have to progress. You have to provide a new stimulus and additional stimulus to each workout if you want to grow. Um, structure your life around your gains. This is a, this is one that people, people don't think about. Um, and it, I, I, I get, it's a huge sacrifice. You, you feel like an asshole, but, um, if you are dead serious about being a pro, being, being big Rami size, you're going to have to bring your fucking chicken and rice with you when you go see your parents. You're going to have to bring your chicken and rice with you when you go to your girlfriend's house. I can't tell you how many times I hear dudes say, well, you know, I spent Saturday with my girlfriend, so I didn't, you know, diet was a little off. That's not an excuse to be off your diet. They don't care when you get on the stage that you spent the weekend with your fucking girlfriend. 
that that's why you didn't eat right every Saturday and Sunday for for the last year. The dude that beat you, I bet you he he brought his chicken and rice with him. Um, so you know you have to structure your life around around your gains if if you are that serious about it. Once again, if you just want to be a gym bro and look okay, go on with it. That's fine. But don't say you want to be a pro if you aren't willing to make the sacrifices. You have to sacrifice if you want to be elite. You just have to. Um, especially if you're not gifted genetically, which most of us are not. You know, that is 1% of 1% that are gifted genetically. So you have to structure your life to fit your gains. Once again, you can't go out and party. Uh, you have to bring your food with you. Uh, you can't use your friends or your girlfriend or, or a company event or work or whatever as a cop out not to eat. You bring your food with you. You figure out how to get it down. Um, being uncomfortable while you're growing. I get, I get a lot of people that reach out to me and I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting horrible cramps. Uh, this doesn't feel right. My feet are swollen up. <laughs> whatever. I'm telling you, getting big fucking sucks. It, it is a miserable experience. Once you get settled in, it's not so bad. Um, I've been up over 300 pounds before, and, it, and and I'll be honest with you, I fucking hated it. I think 310, 315 was as big as I ever, I've ever been. Um, that was a long time ago. I don't think I ever want to be that big again, especially at my age. Um, but I was miserable as fuck when I weighed that. So I can't imagine being 510 and weighing 300 pounds. It's got to be awful. You know, doing things like wiping your ass tying your shoes and scratching your back become become difficult <laughs> walking upstairs suck you have to wear a CPAP machine to sleep um you know you, you're getting out of breath uh you know just walking to the car you know cramps there's there's all kinds of stuff they don't tell you about when you get big um you know you might be able to push some weight when you're in the gym but the, the, everything else becomes miserable um you have to be willing to be uncomfortable um, you have to be willing to have a body that doesn't fit into things, <laughs> you know, you're not going to fit into that. I remember distinctly when I was going to, uh, when I was in my late twenties and I think I was up over 300 pounds at one point, uh, I'm going to an amusement park and I couldn't fit in a goddamn roller coaster. They couldn't, they couldn't get the thing closed over my shoulders. Um, uh, and it was, I don't know, I was a little embarrassed and, you know, my friends were going over the roller coaster but that was the price you pay for being that big. You just can't. You can't fit into shit that regular people can fit into. You, you, you end up you know, clothes don't fit. Um, you know, just being uncomfortable. You have to wear fucking sweatpants everywhere. Um, the, these are the you know. Why do you why do you think bodybuilders wear tracksuits year round? <laughs> it's because nothing else fits. Um, all right, guys. Anyway, remember. Gear is not the answer. Well, it is part of the answer, but it is not the only answer. You have to suffer and sacrifice to get huge. Take care.